is Saturday the 27th. I think it starts in two weeks on Sunday. Um, so, uh, me, uh, being a former football player, American football player, I'm very big into um, uh, fantasy football. Obviously, it's a very big thing. It's grown into something huge over the past decade. Um, it's been around for years, though. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with fantasy football, uh, it's basically where you and like a set number of friends just draft your draft uh, players from the NFL, uh, and you can do this with any sport. You just draft your players uh, based on who you think is going to be uh, perform the best. score based on your team's performance and you have a record and it's just a lot of fun it's, it adds another dynamic to watching football um, on Sundays and on Mondays and on Thursdays I love I love this time of year I love fall just for this um, for this reason specifically um, I actually have a FanDuel account, which is essentially uh, daily uh, fantasy sports, or DFS, where uh, each week to week you can pick a new team based on matchups for that weekend or for that, um, for that day. as of late, it's been uh, closer to uh, two or three a week, and I apologize for that, but it's just been a combination of not finding the time, and when there is the time, not having the motivation, um, and that's my fault, but regardless, that's, that's another tangent. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, so, if you haven't football in the past uh, it is a blast and I highly recommend it I wouldn't I wouldn't try um, uh, what, am I, what am I trying to say I wouldn't go on FanDuel and start betting a lot um, if you know if you don't know what you're doing uh, it's an easy way to lose a lot of money uh, I believe I am probably just two dollars dollars at a time so it's kind of hard to tell um, but regardless uh, if you don't know anything about fantasy sports don't do it however if you do know about fantasy sports and you would like to join FanDuel leave a comment in this in the uh, comment section below and I will actually refer you and I believe it helps the both of us so I think you get like a, a bonus for being for referring you.
fiscal, fiscally smart. Um, what else? What, uh, what, what else did I want to? Okay, so um, that is an overall description of fantasy sports. So let's go look at my lineup for week one of the NFL season. So, um, today the news broke that Tony Romo is out with, sorry, uh, some noise, sorry about that, I uh, thought someone came in the room, but I guess not. So, as I was saying, uh, so the news broke today that Tony Romo is going to be out for six to ten weeks, meaning he will not be playing week one. So, um, with that tidbit of news, I will show you my first lineup uh, as of right now, and it is definitely subject to change. I'm trying to see if you can see that. I'll turn down the brightness a little bit more. Okay. So, um, Tony Romo's backup. Okay, so let me, let me, hold on, before we go there, let me explain a little bit about fan. A set uh, salary cap and each player is worth a certain amount of uh, dollars uh, based on the caliber of the player so for instance uh, your Julio Joneses and your Odell Beckham Juniors and your um, Antonio Browns are going to be way more expensive than say your Anquan Bolton's, uh, Vincent Jackson's, Danny Amendola's, and so forth. Uh, and it's that way for every position. So um, you gotta you gotta spread out your money based on. You, you can't just. I, I mean, obviously, if it was daily fantasy sports, you could say, "Hey, anyway, well, I want uh, Tom Brady, um, Adrian Peterson." Uh, Todd Gurley, Odell Beckham Jr., Julio Jones, Gronkowski, you know, the Broncos defense. It doesn't work that way. You have to you have to find the you have to find the sleepers each each week and figure out who who's gonna uh, perform the best f for their given uh, salary. So here we have my week one or one of my week one uh lineups. For quarterback, we have Dak Prescott, and he is a second-year player. I, I believe he's a second-year player out of Mississippi State, I believe. Maybe it's Ole Miss. I, I get those mixed up sometimes. And he will be starting week one, and I think that he may have a heck of a, of a game. He's going up against the Giants, who have a lackluster defense. So, in my opinion, I, I think, and, and him being a backup and never starting a game, he is the minimum salary of $5,000. So, I'm going to save a lot of money right there, right off the bat, picking my quarterback. Uh, second, uh, so, um, every lineup, you pick one quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, a tight end, a kicker, and a defense. So, um, next we have our two running backs. I have Lamar Miller, who was picked up by the Houston Texans, who really, um, have a, have like a makeshift team this year. They got, uh, they got a bunch of parts. They got, um, Osweiler from the Broncos. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, the Texans do run the ball quite a bit. I think they're more of a run-heavy offense than they are pass, you know, throwing the rock. So, uh, and Lamar Miller is it's a highly projected running back for this upcoming year. Due to that fact, uh, he came from the Dolphins, where they didn't really have that good of a team, that good of an offense. So, he was kind of underappreciated. So I picked him up. Next we have 
Jamal Charles. Jamal Charles is, a, in my opinion, an elite running back for the Kansas City Chiefs. They're going up against the San Diego Chargers, who uh, have one of the worst defenses in the league. Um, Jamal Charles is also a very good receiving back, and you get points for receiving yards and, and receptions as well, even though it's a running back. And that is a big part of uh, choosing your running backs you want to have. Uh, typically, you want to have running backs that uh, go out for passes, go uh, go out for screens, uh, and stuff like that. Next, we have Odell Beckham Jr., which he is subject to change. I think that Giants, uh, the Giants and Cowboys game is going to be very high scoring. Uh, I'm predicting uh, multiple touchdowns on both sides of the ball, simply because uh, neither of them have good uh, defenses, really. Um, Odell Beckham Jr. is a freak, uh, freak athlete. He's a freak receiver as well. Um, and quite honestly, I'm going to be very interested in this game week one because I want to see Dak Prescott play. Uh, and Odell Beckham Jr., I believe, will have a good game as well. I will definitely, definitely be watching that game week one. Uh, I originally had Julio Jones, which I'm a huge Falcons fan. So, um, of course, I had, of course I'm going to pick Julio Jones um, against Tampa Bay. But I decided against that. I decided to go against Odell Beckham Jr. I think he's the more, um, I hate to say it, but I think Odell Beckham Jr. is a little bit um, more utilized for their team than uh, for the Giants. I think Odell Beckham makes a bigger impact on the Giants than Julio Jones makes an impact on the Falcons, which is saying a lot because I do think Julio Jones um, is a big hit. It's a, it has a big impact on the Falcons. Um, so, Odell Beckham Jr. Next, we have Michael Crabtree of the Oakland Raiders, and they're going up against the New Orleans Saints. Um, New Orleans, uh, I, I can't stand the Saints, <laughs> quite frankly. Uh, I really, I really despise everyone. South, other than the Falcons. So that being the Buccaneers, the Panthers, and the Saints. Uh, doesn't mean I don't respect any of the teams, but I just don't like them just because, I mean, come on, they're the Falcons' competition. I'm not supposed to like them. Uh, so Michael Crabtree is going up against the Saints, which they do have a pretty weak team nowadays, um, although they are rebuilding. I think the Raiders are going to be a playoff team this year for the first time in forever. They got a good offense now. They got Derek Carr throwing the ball at quarterback. They got Crabtree. They have, um, shoot, Amari uh, Cooper. Uh, is their is their new uh, premier wide receiver? However, I can't afford him, so I'm going to go with Michael Crabtree instead. And for our third wide receiver, I went with Golden Tate of the Detroit Lions. Now, I think Golden Tate um, is going to take a bigger role. Right now, he is at 6900 salary, which is um, the minimum salary is 5000 And the most expensive player is like 9100 so he's about right in the middle of the pack. Uh, so, for those of you who know, he plays for the Do Detroit Lions, and the Detroit Lions, he used to be the number two receiver behind Calvin Johnson, and then Calvin Johnson um, retired unexpectedly this past year, so he's going to need to step up big time for the uh, Lions. And then next we got tight end Jordan Reed going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers. This was kind of, um, I had a lot of extra salary left over uh, after picking. I, I usually start at quarterback and I just go down the list. Um, after picking um, all my other players, I, I realized I had a lot of salary left so I could splurge on tight end and I saw um, Jordan Reed. And Jordan Reed is Kirk Cousins' favorite, um, favorite receiver. Kirk Cousins being the quarterback of the Washington Redskins. Uh, I'm 
Gronkowski, uh, one of the most expensive players. He is going up against the Arizona Cardinals, who have one of the best uh, defenses in the league. So, logically, it wouldn't make much sense. It wouldn't make much sense to uh, to pick Gronkowski. Um, my second pick. Kelsey of the Kansas City Chiefs against the Chargers, but I decided to go with Jordan Reed. Uh, kicker, I took Adam Vinatieri just because he is one of the best kickers. Uh, uh, he's probably pushing 40 years old, if not 40 already. Uh, actually, no. After completing 10 years apiece. Oh, 10 years apiece. Yeah, so he's been in the NFL for 20 City Chiefs defense against the San Diego Chargers, and they are the most expensive defense. Um, they had a pretty pretty decent season. I, don't, I guess maybe they picked up. Uh, they they may have acquired um, some free agents in the off season. I, I don't really know why they'd be the most expensive. So, that is my lineup for week one, as it stands right now, um, which there's a lot of time that uh, half those guys could get hurt in the next two weeks, either it be during practice or preseason games. But, um, I'm very excited for this football season coming up, and I cannot wait uh, for all the fantasy sports stuff and just the Falcons to be back on. Falcons are my overall favorite team out of any sport, out of any level, professional, college, international, whatever you want. Falcons, Atlanta Falcons, that's it for me. Uh, I'm really excited to see what they do this year. Uh, so, uh, but that's all I had today. Uh, we're about 20 minutes in, so I'm going to end it here. If you guys enjoyed this video let me know in the comment section I know this is a little bit I'm going on I'm going a little bit off uh, off standard as far as what a ASMR collect and play has been about it's been mostly about gaming and uh, collecting but I, I, I'm kind of just wanting to branch out a little bit switch it up a little bit and uh, and just see received. So, uh, with that being said, that's it for this video. If you liked it, leave a like, uh, comment, let me, let me know what you think, and I will see you guys again at a later time. So, if you're watching this video 